Uh, hey everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the Wire Tutorial Series. I, I shouldn't call this a series. Um, sorry about the massive, like, two-month wait. Like, I understand, yeah, like, oh, you're expecting the second one to come rather soon, or maybe, I don't know what you're expecting. But, unfortunately, school, you know, school started back up. <clears throat> sorry about that. School started back up, I didn't have any time and when I had time I didn't have the energy so here we go here we go what are we gonna be doing today we're gonna be doing the hello world example or at least that's what we'll be doing at the end because I need to explain some things before we get there like this is the you're gonna see why I didn't do it just on the spot in the last video because there was just a bunch of stuff to explain because assembly is fun Anyways, I'm not gonna explain how to oh, wire it and everything. You should know how to wire stuff if you're watching this tutorial. Um, if you're a wired beginner, I, I question if you should be watching this. You know what? Maybe, maybe you already know assembly. You just want to know how to do it here. That's irrelevant. Whatever. I need to do this. Um. No, no, not that yet. I haven't explained what that is. I this is what I typically do for just anything. Uh, I do with the CPU. I just get I get a data port. I explained what that was in the last one. Get a data port, get two buttons, one toggle and one not. This is the toggle one, yeah. And use the toggle button for the on switch, use the non toggle button for the reset switch, wire the IO bus to the data port. Um, and I'm gonna leave frequency alone because this speed, like I'm not doing anything particularly complicated. This speed is completely fine for for the Hello World example. It's when you start doing more complicated stuff, like uh, my computer, like that's when you might want to start like upping the speed. Ooh, I just got a bit of lag there. Um, but yeah, I'll leave interrupter on because it's not relevant for this uh, tutorial. Uh, I don't see it being useful for this. And memory bus we will be using in a second. In a second after I explain how to address memory and how it works and stuff. So let's get to it. Um, so you remember how I explained the move instruction, how it's really a copy instruction. So you do, you know, just a recap. To copy one two three to EAX, you do move one two or move EAX comma one two three. Assemble that, and boom. Now EAX. Uh, after I turn this on, boom. EAX. The hardware register is now, or now has the value of one two three. So, yeah, you can do the same thing with memory addresses. So if I if I picked the completely random number of six five five three six, and actually no no, no five. you would this would be copying the value of one two three to the memory address of six five five three five and you'll learn in a second that that number is not so random so the memory how do i how do you hmm i'm stuttering here i gotta explain this in a way that makes sense so the mem uh, the cpu has a certain amount of memory that it, that it can address it has if i am right 64 kilobytes exactly I think that's what that value is that is 64 kilobytes I think don't quote me on that um so you can address or the CPU can by default address all the numbers from 0 to there oh yeah I forgot to mention if you put a number in brackets the CPU will treat it as a memory location. Same with the pound symbol or pound sign or is that pound symbol, pound sign, what do you call it? I think it's what it's called, hashtag whatever. Um, same with that, it treats it as a memory address. That is very important to know. And you can move values to it and move get values from it. Yeah, it's just your normal, typical, typical thing. Um, what else? What else we need to know? Right, right, right. The CPU is how much memory. It has a very specific amount of memory. Like I said, this number. Put it in brackets so it treats it as a memory location. 
and if you try to address anything outside of it like this very specific number three four five three six if you try to if you try to move a value to there without wiring anything you know well, if you follow this tutorial exactly up to now and you try to do this the CPU will give you an error uh, let's see this oh yeah to go to the debug mode because it shows you all the inputs and outputs if you go to the debug mode how to do that um press shift F switches from the wire tool to the debug tool and then you uh, what is it left left click on anything and it starts showing you all of its values and stuff it's super useful you, you will seriously like use this a lot um, to get rid of it just press R then uh, to get it again just press left kick or left click on whatever you want to use again there you know now if you go if you look up there and look at the microscopic text from the debugger you'll see that um, under out which is output you will see error in seven point what is that six six that's a memory addressing error if I remember correctly because I tried to address memory that the CPU does not have well the CPU can't see because it doesn't exist like it's outside of its default memory range and since there's nothing connected to the memory bus which I'll get to in a second it there's nothing there it's like it doesn't understand It's like what that's not that's not a number that I can address that's over the max that I can see so it throws up an error or an exception is raised or whatever you want to call it and it doesn't work the CPU fails uh, execution halts right there on the spot everything stops now that's how memory addressing works I think oh yeah, yeah, yeah. don't try to don't try to use uh, just random CPU memory addresses willy-nilly um, because this can mess up things severely because the CPU actually uses its own memory to store things and you don't want to overwrite that um if because if you notice if you can if you assemble the program by pressing this button down here before you place it you'll notice that it'll give you as um, the number of bytes that your program takes up in the CPU's memory that is not just window dressing that is an actual number like or, yeah it's an actual number that's how like it's actually in the CPU's memory that's how much space it takes up so if you just use random CPU addresses for memory which I don't recommend you could potentially overwrite your program and the CPU will give you or could potentially give you some cryptic error try to avoid doing that instead define variables I'll show you how to do that in a second so that's memory addressing oh yeah, yeah, yeah. before I go on to the other thing we'll be doing before we get to the hello world thing I need to show you how the memory bus works see the memory bus essentially allows the CPU to see the memory of other high-speed devices so it connects the high-speed devices memory on top of the CPU's memory so that address that I mentioned earlier 605 65536 which is normally out of the range of the CPU CPU's access or memory access will now be accessible because it's um, because you connected an external device to it so if I were to do this, that uh, that address uh, that I mentioned is now an actual like memory that the CPU can read, and that actually should. Hmm. One of these is shouldn't be toggle. Why is it not working? <laughs> that's cool. Uh, hmm, that's weird. Oh no, I know why it's not working. Um, but it, the number's still there. Like, you can't see it because I don't have anything attached to it that allows you to actually see it. That's kind of a complicated thing to make, but I'll show you that maybe in more advanced things if I make those, perhaps, maybe. But the value 123 is now in the first address of the console screen. Now, the console screen normally displays all of its memory as characters. That's how you write to the console screen. You give it numbers and it displays them as characters. It's not displaying anything in this case because it requires a second thing in order to actually show something. So just do 60537, which is the next address down. Because, and then 
you have to give it a color like you have to give the character a color otherwise it won't actually show so the syntax for this is uh, RGB RGB yeah that's right RGB RGB and the first RGB is for the foreground I think that's how you spell that and the second one is for the background you can add a seventh digit for uh, flashing but I won't do that like the colors will flash and stuff um, so if I do that it should now display the actual thing yeah it did I just had it on the side it, I, I positioned it sideways on accident my my apologies there now that I gave it a color and a character and numbers to display it's now displaying the character equivalent of that number so yeah that's how memory addressing works and that's also how uh, the console screen displays characters what else do I need to do before we get to the hello world example uh, loops right loops and conditional statements loops and conditional statements that's a fun thing to do in the CPU I'm gonna leave that connected because uh, we'll be using it again in a second so so what how do we do loops so in the first video I mentioned there are a bunch of general purpose registers like EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, EDI, and there's three more register or there's two more registers that I refuse to mention because they're not really general purpose. Uh, you can't use them for just anything, or at least if you do, it's not a really good idea. Um, really, these have specific purposes too, but you I you can just use them whatever as long as you don't use instructions that specifically alter these registers. But that can be said about any of them. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. I mentioned that there are all these registers and stuff. Now, they all stand for something. Um, like the A, B, C, D, S, and then D. They all stand for something. If I remember, this is the accumulative or the accumulator register. Or cumulative, I think. The base register, the counter register, and the data register. Then there's the source, the source index, and the destination index. Now, why is this relevant? Well, it's because that their names kind of uh, should, or at least they're intended to let you know what they, what their purpose is for, or at least that's how it is for some of them. Now, for loops, the counter register or ECX is used for loops and stuff. That or at least, yeah, that's a, that's what its purpose is. It's used for loops and things. You can do it. You can use it for anything really, but it's loop instructions specifically alter it so it's like used for that kind of stuff and it's and that's what I use it for <laughs> I'm repeating myself um before we get to loops we need to uh, cover what a label is because you need a label in order to actually do a loop well I don't think you specifically need it but that's complicated so basically yeah you need a label to actually do it now what is a label a label I'm just gonna write down some random programming crap up here you just you don't need to understand like it has no purpose it's just to fill up space now what a label is a label is a point in your program I'm just gonna call it label is that is it label or is it label I think it's that well, I'm gonna call it label one and now to actually how do you how you make a label is you type the name of the label and then you do a colon not so, yeah you just do label or whatever you want to call the label and then colon that's how you make a label now a label is an addressable point in your program um what does that mean basically if you use if you make instruct or if you use instructions that take memory addresses Labels allow you to access or reference the memory address of uh, whatever instruction or piece of data is next to it or below it. So if I said, I don't know, now I would, um, if I went and did hey let's get the hmm, what's an instruction that I haven't oh, 
shoot. <laughs> no, I need to explain what the jump instruction is. You know what? Yeah. In order to do this example, I need to explain what the jump instruction is. The jump instruction, JMP, uh, basically it just jumps back to a label. So it, it like it just executes whatever is below the label. It goes from here all the way back up to here if I did this. It just like it would do normal execute it, like it alters the flow of execution essentially in your program. It allows you to do like all types of cool branching and conditionals and whatever else. Now there's all kinds of form of the forms of the jump instruction that we'll get to later. Um so yeah, it allows you to reference basically a point in memory in your program under different contexts and stuff like that so for in this case like I said the jump instruction just jumps back to it so it does this instruction again because it's right below the label and then it goes back to jump and this loops forever hey I, I inadvertently did a loop in an, you know while explaining how to do the label but yeah that's what labels are now what else what else before I actually make a full well, no, that is a full loop, but like a loop that actually ends, like, because like, this is an infinite loop. This will go on forever, actually. The program will never end. Pretty sure it's on. Reset it. It's never ending. And if you noticed, if you're paying attention to the debug on the side, you don't have to, but I'm just pointing this out. When the CPU ends or when it reaches the end of its programming or the end of the program, it gives an error too. That means all that means is the execution is stopped because there's nothing else to actually execute. And since it's, there's no value of two there, that tells you that the CPU is still running. And since this is a really short program, that means like and it, it only takes like a split second for this to happen. That means that it's looping forever. And that's essentially how you do a loop, kind of. You make a label and you can do a jump. You do like you jump back to the label, and that's how you do an infinite loop. Now, of course, you can do loops. You can do conditional loops, and you can do loops that end after like a certain value is reached. You can do a lot of type of stuff, which we will be doing for the Hello World example that we'll get to in a second. Is there anything else I need to explain after that? Yes, yes, there is. Yes, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Um, I need to exp uh, explain conditional. Uh, conditional programming now there is an instruction called compare or CMP now you how this works is it compares the two numbers right it compares the two registers or values that it gives that you give it like in this case let's say compare EAX to EBX and let's say I don't know EBX is one move and then EBX is zero it return um, and you compare the two basically it would say hey is e is EAX how does EAX relate to EBX like just compare the two numbers and then it writes the result to a register this of course this register isn't like general purpose you cannot use it for just anything um, it writes the result of the comparison to the register and then um, conditional instructions will then act accordingly like uh, new instruction again this is I'm showing you a lot of new instructions in this video see this is why I didn't do the hello world example first but um let's say I don't know jump if equal to yeah je jump if equal to um, and then I need to make a label label one because I need to reference something so jump if equal to label I spelled it wrong okay basically all this does is if EAX is equal to EBX jump down to label one and return which in this case would end the program However, they're not equal. Um, since they're not equal, this wouldn't actually execute. It only executes since this, like this is a conditional instruction. It would only execute if these numbers from the previous comparison are actually equal. 
Now, let's say there's another one called jump if not equal. Let's make another label, label two. Now, if they're not equal, which they aren't, in this case, it will jump down to label two and return. In this case, uh, both the labels do the same thing, but this is just for examples, just so I can show you um, how it all works. Now, yeah, that's how you do conditionals, essentially. There's all types of conditional uh, instructions. These are the simple ones. Now, there's also, what is it, jump jump if greater than jump if not greater than jump if greater than or equal to jump if not greater than or equal to jump if zero jump if not zero um i th i think there might be more there's probably more but you get you get the general idea you get the gist of it you get the idea that's how you do conditional jumping anyways. There's other conditional uh, instructions, but those are more, more complicated and I am perhaps may show them in a future video. Right, 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 right. Now, there's another thing I need to show you how to do before we get on with the uh, Hello World. I know this is taking forever, but you know, just bear with me. I need to show you how to define variables or data not necessarily variables but you know in my mind they're all the same thing because the CPU just treats you know I'll say I'll explain all in a second basically um, there's a few ways to do this how I always do it is I define a label that describes the data I'm about to define like I don't know in this case I'm gonna show you how to do a str or not a string I'll do that in a second I'm gonna do number one and then uh, yeah that's the label number one and then I'm going to type DB which uh, stands for data byte I'm pretty sure and then a number so that defined the value one two three um, at the label one or at the label number one so basically how this works is if I sudden if I you can I keep how do I say this um like I said like I said er um, before I can't remember if it was this video or the last one but you can access or reference numbers or not numbers labels you can reference labels as memory addresses and stuff like that so if I were to do if I were to move um the value at label um if I were to move the value at number one which is this label down here instead of zero you would then be moving the value one two three into EBX which then change this whole flow of execution actually no it doesn't because um, no because they're still not equal so that doesn't change anything I don't know why I said that but yeah instead of zero that would be the value one two three because the value one two three is defined at label number one and that's that's one way of defining numbers now I'm gonna show you how to uh, define strings as well because you need to define the string hello world so I'm just gonna type string one with this double colon a byte and now to define a string in this manner you have to put it in quotes so DB uh, quotes and then whatever the, the string is to be called so in this case hello world then outside of the uh, the quotes you need a comma and a zero this zero tells the um, it tells the assembler or the CPU that this is where the string ends this is super important when um, defining strings and stuff always remember to put that zero or put that common zero at the end always remember to do that other things otherwise things might screw up but uh, yeah that's how you do strings you now you can define a bunch of numbers next to each other as well like uh, just put a comma next to it actually so one two three four one two three four one two three four five 
like that's how you do and these are all separate um pieces of data these are all sep these all have separate addresses and stuff um, and in order to actually address these these two numbers after one two three since they're not necessarily exactly at the label um, number one because they have different addresses and stuff you all you have to do is offset it so add one to um, actually no, no, no we're not gonna talk about that now because I don't want to go I don't want to get off topic well is that relevant to this yeah, it is actually. Yeah, it is. Thinking about it, this is super important. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in order to actually access these, because these don't have labels right above them, and since they all have different memory addresses and stuff, you have to offset your memory or your offset the address that you're using here. So. In this case, number one refers to this value because it's right here. The label's like right there. It's labeling that. Um, add a number one or add one to that um, address, and now it's x or now it's referencing this one, one two four. The value one two four, and then if you do this, uh, add two to the address of the label number one. You then you're now pointing to the um, piece of data uh, 1245 <laughs> yeah that's that's how you do it things will get things can get crazy right? so yeah things can get crazy and you're gonna see that this is you're gonna be using this technique um not technique but you're gonna be using this addressing in the hello world example um because each of these characters in the string is a different number with a different address so you're going to be needing to actually know how to how this how all this works. Man, that made no sense what I just said, but it's fine. It's fine. You'll see. You'll see what I mean in a quick second. I think I've explained all the instructions and variables that I will be using. Um. Actually, no. There's one more. There is, in fact, one more instruction aside from this one. Like I said, this is return. In this case, I'll explain what return is later because um, in this case, it just ends the execution. In this case, it, it has other functions and stuff. Um, there's another instruction, inc. It stands for increment. And if you know what increment means, or if you don't know what it means, that means you just add one to something. Why? Well, you might be asking, hey, why wouldn't you use add the add instruction? Well, I haven't showed you what that means or what that is. I'll do that afterwards. I'll explain everything afterwards. Um. So what else? What else? What else? Um. What else? Shoot, I gotta hurry up. Um. I think that's it, really. I think we can get to the programming. Like I said, I, I'm not gonna be showing this one. I wrote this one earlier just to show, tell, um, just to make sure I actually remember how to do this. But I'm gonna be doing this on the spot, so. I might, I might make mistakes and hopefully if I do I'll answer any questions that you potentially have and help you with any mistakes that you might make so now this is just good practice yeah we're gonna be doing the actual hello world example now freaking finally um this is just good practice I always put a label at the very beginning of my program uh, either called start or INIT which to me I just uh, it stands for initialized for me so I always do this at the beginning of like any program I do it's I think it's good practice just so you can like restart the program without having to hit the reset button um right, 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 right. so what do we need to do first now grant now remember road we're gonna be moving the string hello world onto the console screens memory which is out which is which begins at this value over here this is the first memory address of the console screen so 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 I am going to store that value in a register because it will be useful later on 
Um, you'll, you'll, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see later on. And now, what else? I need to define the, the, the string. Uh, hello. Hello. And then. Hello, world. Ooh, I almost forgot the DB. You need that. Um, and then I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to get the address of the first character of Hello World. And I'm going to move that address to EBX. And now I'm going to have another label called loop with a... Actually, I'm just going to call it loop1 because loop is an instruction, which is why like any instructions are like highlighted orange. Instructions and uh, commands for the assembler. So you can't use those for loops and things. Or not loops, but uh, labels and things. Certain keywords, that's why I have one after the loop there. Now, oh wait, there's one more thing. I need to move ECX zero because, hmm, do I even need ECX in this case? To be honest, I don't think I do. All right, so the first instruction we're gonna be doing is a compare instruction. We need to compare the value of EBX, which represents like, like the value at EBX is different from the value in EBX. The value at EBX is the value at um, the number that is contained within EBX, which is kind of complicated. Like, and for the first run of this, you take this. So this is, no, that's not it. That's not what it is. You take whatever number this is going to be assembled to, or whatever this address. Hold on, what am I trying to say here? The address at the number is contained, like, so I don't know if EBX is 1, 2, 3, the value at the memory location, 1, 2, 3. That's what that means when you put a register in brackets. But anyways, you compare that to 0. See, this is why I put the 0 there. This is so the program doesn't run forever. When, e when the value at EBX is 0, which represents the end of the string, jump, if equal, to end. And that's a label I'm gonna make down here, do the return instruction, we're good. Now, now that that's over, I'm going to do uh, a jump instruction. This is gonna be at the bottom of it. I just like to do it first before I forget, so it loops, you know, so it loops until it gets to the end of the string. Now, we're gonna be moving the value, shoot, move the value from EBX or from the memory location at BX, which is essentially any character in the string. Essentially, move the currently selected character uh, to this memory to the memory location at EAX. Um, and so that essentially just copies the first string over to EAX. And now I'm going to increment EAX so that changes the memory location that this that EAX. Yeah, it just changes the number. It adds one to it. And now we're going to move. Now we're going to move EAX. Uh, there's your. Remember, this is. Remember the uh, syntax for the color for the character. That's what we're doing here. It's RGB, RGB. So the foreground is going to be black, and the black ground, background is going to be. Or, no. No, the foreground. No, wait, wait. Regardless, you'll see. You'll see. Regardless, it's gonna be white. It's gonna be white essentially. Uh, is this the background or is this whatever? It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I'm a great. I know what I'm doing definitely. And then increment EAX once more. Increment EBX as well because you want it to uh, point to the next character, and you want EAX to point to the next memory location so it can put in a character instead of like. Because one character plus its num plus its um, colors and everything takes up two memory locations. That's why we're incrementing EAX twice, and then and then you increment EBX like I said to uh, point to the next character, and that should be done really. I, th I think that's it. Please work, please work. Uh, yeah, that should be it. Hey, oh my God, it worked! Yes, it worked the first time. Holy crap. Okay, so I, I do know what I'm doing. Okay. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. I hope some of that made some sense. 
I, I explained I explained those kind of abstract topics kind of strangely um yeah sorry about the wait oh, maybe I, I, I like there's no schedule for this kind of stuff like I said because I have school and I don't really have free time to do this kind of stuff regularly I hope you enjoyed this I hope you perhaps maybe even learned something uh, thanks for watching and tell me if tell me uh, things in the comments that I can improve on yada 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 and stuff like that and goodbye <laughs> that was terrible